welcome to the lecture on continuous cooling transformation diagrams. So, they are also known as uh, the CCT diagrams uh, popularly. Now, uh, as we see uh, in our earlier uh, lecture, uh, we discussed about the TTT uh, diagram. In that, uh, we assumed that transformation uh, is done at uh, or uh, there is transformation uh, uh, at one temperature that is uh, isothermal transformation is there. Now, rarely you see that uh, you know such uh, is the case. So, rarely any steel is twins to a constant temperature and isothermally transformed because temperature will change. So, it is normally continuously cooled uh, from Austrian rising temperature to room temperature at different cooling rates. So, certainly uh, when you are uh, cooling then in that case you will have different cooling rates uh, from the austenitizing temperature to the room temperature. So, uh, if you have to take this uh, you know uh, uh, also this uh, continuous cooling uh, case into account in that case this CCT diagrams will be helpful and CCT T diagrams they are depicting the transformation temperature and time relationship during continuous cooling because there is normally a case of continuous cooling. And in that case you need to understand that how uh, the uh, transformation is going to proceed. So, specimen will be cooled from austenitic range at a um, constant cooling rate and uh, in that case uh, you will have uh, the paralytic start and uh, finish points uh, determined. So, basically again in this, this case you will have a constant cooling rate and uh, you will be uh, uh, in that uh, you are having uh, these points like uh, when the perlite uh, uh, started and when the perlite was finished. Uh, and uh, in that case, uh, so the same thing will be done uh, here also you will have uh, for a particular amount of time and then in that case uh, what you do is uh, um, you will have uh, further uh, quenching. So, you can uh, by, by knowing the fraction of uh, suppose say martensite uh, because of the um, presence of austenite at any stage you can understand it. So, uh, so, accordingly you will have the different points and uh, if you draw these uh, locus of the uh, points then you will have uh, these uh, you know uh, different uh, you know curves that will be known as continuous cooling curves. So, uh, you know if you draw the uh, continuous cooling um, curve uh, for the eutectoid steel. So, uh, that uh, looks like this. So, as you see in this case uh, you will have uh, the uh, liquid steel uh, you know I mean uh, steel uh, heated to uh, into this austenitic zone, zone this is eutectoid uh, composition steel. So, uh, then from here uh, you are uh, cooling at um, the different cooling rate the cooling rate this cooling rate is uh, a slow cooling rate whereas, this cooling rate is known as this is certainly uh, the other curves uh, are uh, you know uh, for the higher cooling rate than this. So, this is 3 degree uh, you know uh, per second similarly this is 35 degree per second 140 degree per second and more than 140 degree per second. Now, what you see uh, in this case that uh, you will have uh, you know once you go for this cooling rate you will have uh, these points A and B uh, which are formed and um, uh, you know uh, what you see uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, basically paralytic start point uh, A and uh, this point is the uh, uh, paralytic finish uh, point B. So, uh, they are uh, using the metallographic method and they are outlined. Now, they are at uh, basically what you see is that uh, they are at uh, the lower uh, you know uh, temperature value x and at a later time uh, you know uh, then uh, as per shown by the TTT diagram because uh, the specimen has spent uh, most of the uh, you know uh, time. So, that is uh, 
cooling time at higher temperature. So, that is why there is a shift. So, you see that it is at A and it is at B what you see as compared to that uh, shown by the TTT diagram. Now, uh, what you see that uh, uh, with these different cooling rates uh, you will have. Uh, so, if you come to uh, this you know in, in this cooling rate case at uh, uh, this time. So, if you look at this uh, probably 10, 10 raised to power 3 which line comes here something close to this. So, in this case at this point this transformation is completely complete for paralytic start and paralytic finish. And uh, then uh, so, it will be complete transformation from austenite to perlite. If you are uh, behind this in that case you will have uh, you know uh, the different transformation. Now, uh, in this case uh, you will have now the, the different zones that will be perlitic zones. So, you will have uh, uh, coarse perlite this side and then further fine perlite. Then uh, in the lower side uh, you will have uh, the um, you know uh, benite and all that. So, uh, what happens that if you look at uh, this uh, microstructure the, this uh, graph uh, you see that uh, a cooling rate of um, uh, 3 degree C per second if you look at this degree, uh, this line that is your uh, 3 degree per second. So, this will give you the fine perlite. So, you are coming transformation is complete here. So, it will give you the finer perlite in, in this case. When you are uh, you know uh, going for very slow cooling. So, for very slow cooling of uh, uh, 0 0.01 degree C. So, this is your very slow cooling rate. So, if you are coming with this cooling rate and, and uh, in this case you are into this zone where the transformation is complete. So, this zone will give you the uh, coarse perlitic structure with uh, uh, 3 degree C per second uh, this cooling rate uh, your transformation is complete here and in this lower zone you will have uh, the uh, fine perlitic structure. Now, uh, if you go for further uh, the uh, increase in the cooling rate. Now, if you go for the uh, 35 degree C per, per second. So, if this is the line uh, which corresponds to the uh, 35 degree C T centigrade per second of um, uh, cooling rate. So, it will be uh, crossing this perlitic uh, start. So, it is uh, basically crossing this uh, uh, perlitic finish line. This is your perlitic finish and this is your perlitic start this uh, you know uh, bold line. Uh, so, upper bold line is the perlitic start line and this lower bold line is the perlitic finish line. So, 35 degree C per second this is crossing that uh, perlitic finish line near the uh, nose. So, it is uh, you know it is just crossing here and it will give you very very fine uh, perlitic structure. So, that uh, is uh, because of uh, the very high you know higher cooling rate as compared to the earlier cases. And that is why whenever uh, uh, in, uh, in normal case we talk that uh, when if you have a higher cooling rate you will have finer structure. So, it is uh, it is shown from here because this is the higher I mean coarser perlite zone and this is the uh, finer perlite zone. So, uh, now uh, if you uh, look at uh, this uh, um, you know 140 degree C uh, you know uh, this is uh, 140 degree C per second of cooling rate is this is quite a, uh, high cooling rate. Now, this is uh, just missing the uh, perlitic curve. So, uh, you know and uh, it is also not entering the benetic zone. So, this is uh, in the bottom bottom side you have the, this this side it is the benetic zone. So, this 140 degrees 140 degree C per second line. So, this line is basically missing that uh, perlitic start curve and uh, uh, this will be uh, uh, you know uh, transforming to all the Martin side because there is no perlitic transformation neither it is further going and uh, and, and being hold you know at, at this temperature and going into that isothermal transformation zone where the benite is formed because in earlier case what we had seen that when you are coming uh, this line and when you come past the nose of the C curve it is coming and then when you are holding here then you are coming in this zone which is the benetic zone. Now, in this zone if you are uh, having this uh, 140 degree C uh, per second line. So, and if you are uh, continuing uh, through it. 
So, you, know, you will be getting the uh, full martensite, uh, martensite structure uh, in, in this case. So, you know uh, you must have, so that basically defines uh, you know the concept of the critical cooling rate. So, um, basically this uh, uh, critical cooling rate, this is the critical cooling rate because it is just touching the nose of the C curve uh, outer uh, part and uh, basically the uh, cooling rate must be uh, more than this you know uh, for the full hardening of the steel for the full martensitic structure of the steel your cooling rate must be exceeding uh, this value and uh, uh, you know if uh, you know if the um, uh, steel so in between 35 and 140 so if you it is 140 and it is more than 140 in that case you are getting the full hardening the full transformation from austenite to uh, martensite takes place. Whereas, if you are uh, between 35 and 140 uh, degree centigrade uh, per second then still will be crossing that perlitic uh, start and uh, it is not uh, crossing that perlitic um, uh, finish uh, you know curve. So, uh, what happens uh, in this case some of the austenite will be converted to uh, perlite uh, not fully. So, so that way uh, what you see uh, and then you also so and then it will be uh, you know uh, part of austenite will be converted to perlite and uh, you know untransformed austenite will be uh, passing through this uh, benetic range. So, you know so this, this uh, benetic uh, curve will be uh, so for that uh, this uh, uh, untransformed austenite will be passing through that magnetic range of the TTD diagram and uh, benetic start curve basically uh, we, uh, for continuous cooling will be uh, you know shifting uh, somewhat uh, to the right uh, you know uh, so that very little austenite will be transforming to uh, the uh, benite. So, um, and uh, rest will be uh, transforming to uh, martensite. So, that way um, uh, if you analyze uh, this uh, curve you can see that uh, how uh, with what cooling rate what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, transformation product is uh, there. So, um, if you analyze what you see is that if you have uh, the cooling rate uh, you know. So, if you write the uh, cooling rate and for different cooling rate if you uh, so if cooling rate is taken as a degree C per second and if you take this uh, transformation product. So, uh, for the cooling rate of uh, less than uh, 35 degree C uh, uh, per second what you see that you have all a perlitic structure. So, that is uh, you know clear from here if your cooling rate is less than this line if, you, if it the cooling rate is uh, towards this. So, in that case it is passing these perlitic start and perlitic finish line. So, your whole austenite is converted to uh, perlite. Now, if it is uh, between 35 to you know 140. So, in that case uh, you will have uh, the uh, perlite and martensite. And if you have uh, more than 140, so in that case you are going to have all martensite structure. So, this is how uh, you know these uh, continuous cooling transformation curves can be uh, understood uh, for uh, the, you know the uh, uh, for the eutectoid uh, type of steels. We can uh, also understand with respect to the um, you know uh, low alloy steels for nickel uh, chromium moly steel. Uh, so, because in that case what we have seen that uh, these uh, nose of the curves they shift towards right and how uh, you know how can you see that what will be the different type of uh, you know uh, what what the different type of structure will be formed in that case. 
Now, so if you try to draw the uh, continuous cooling curve for uh, the uh, you know nickel chrome moly steels. So, as we have seen earlier we had uh, seen that you know, when you talk about uh, these uh, you know uh, nickel chrome moly steel. So, if you take this uh, axis as time and this is your temperature. Now, as you know that uh, in this case you will have uh, you know uh, one line. So, now in this case uh, uh, what we see that uh, uh, this is your uh, gamma plus martensite uh, you know uh, zone and uh, you will have uh, a line that is uh, for 8 degree C per second. So, just uh, you can see that uh, with such a uh, small uh, cooling rate also you are uh, coming in the zone of uh, martensite. Now, in this case, so this is uh, gamma plus martensite here not this. Now, uh, after this so your uh, one zone is uh, uh, going like uh, this. Now, what happens that if you look at the uh, cooling rate. So, uh, this cooling rate goes like uh, this. Now, the uh, uh, small cooling rate which is uh, support 0 0.006 degrees C per second. Now, for this uh, you know cooling rate uh, what you see. Now, in this case uh, if you look at the uh, continuous cooling curve. So, uh, it will and, and you have another line as 0 0.3 degrees C. So, this will be your uh, uh, 0.3 degrees C you know. Uh, per second. So, for uh, uh, that uh, you know a small cooling rate in between again you will have another line as the uh, 0 0.02 degree C per second. So, this is the different cooling rate what you can see that you have very small values of uh, this cooling rate and in, in at least 8 degree you can see this is uh, coming as the critical value. Now, in this case uh, uh, what you see that uh, here you will have uh, a line that uh, uh, that shows the um, the different uh, you know transformation uh, lines. So, uh, this line will be uh, you know so this line this zone will be alpha plus gamma. So, what we see uh, in uh, this uh, continuous cooling curve line. Now, in this case you have if you have cooling rate which is less than so, if cooling rate is uh, uh, less than 0 0.006 degree centigrade uh, degree centigrade per second. Now, in that case your uh, uh, structure will be pro ferrite plus perlite. So, if it is so in that case you will have uh, this is the alpha plus gamma. So, that gamma and, and this side you have this is a perlite. So, you can uh, uh, see that you will have uh, this alpha plus gamma and then uh, if your uh, temperature I mean uh, cooling rate is even less than this you are going to get alpha plus gamma and plus perlite. Now, if uh, you know uh, further when you go between uh, uh, 0.006 and uh, 0.02 degree C. So, if you are um, cooling rate is maintained between um, uh, these two temperatures. Now, in that case uh, you will have a partial transformation of uh, perlite. Now, uh, you could have uh, seen in uh, your earlier cases. So, you started from 3 degree C uh, you know if you look at this line. So, we started from 0 0.01 and we went up to even 3 and that was uh, from 35 that we have seen that uh, partial transformation, but otherwise there was complete transformation to perlite. But in this case your cooling rate uh, uh, even it is very small. So, that way uh, you know what we see. So, in this case uh, we see that uh, when you have uh, cooling rate between 0 0.006 to 0 0.02 degree C then you have partial transformation of uh, 
per light takes it taking place. And uh, in that case this uh, untransformed austenite that will be uh, transforming to so that uh, transforms to benite and uh, martensite. So, that transforms to benite and martensite at lower temperature. So, uh, that will be the case when your uh, cooling rate is between 0 0.006 and uh, between 0 0.02 degrees C. Now, further if you are increasing um, the uh, cooling rate uh, you know further. So, uh, now between uh, 0 point, so you are further increasing to 0 0.02 to 0 0.3 degrees centigrade. So, between 0 0.02 to 0 0.3 degrees C uh, per second. Now, if you uh, look at uh, uh, this line, so in between there will be no you know perlite transformation. So, uh, so no perlite forms. So, the final structure will be ferrite and benite and martensite, ferrite plus benite plus martensite because uh, uh, this zone uh, this zone is basically uh, the uh, austenite plus benite. So, you will have uh, uh, this uh, gamma uh, you know that uh, um, will be transforming to uh, you know the martensite. So, that happens when your uh, cooling rate is from 0 to 0.3 degree C. Now, uh, when your uh, cooling rate will be further changed your so cooling rate becomes um, you know 0 0.3 to 8 degree C per second. So, that was the uh, you know uh, extreme left uh, you know uh, curve. So, this was the 8 degree C per second. Now, in this case uh, what you see the, the product is uh, benite and martensite. So, what you see that in this steel uh, in this uh, nickel chromium moly steel you are getting a benetic structure and uh, uh, when you are going for uh, continuous cooling. So, uh, but uh, when you have gone to eutectoid steel if you have we have seen that in the case of eutectoid steel you are not getting uh, that easily. So, so also what you see that the critical cooling rate which was there in the case of uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, eutectoid steel it was 140 degree C per second. But in this case the critical cooling rate is uh, uh, quite small that is 8 degree C per second. So, your critical cooling rate that becomes to be uh, you know 8 degree C per second. So, this is the difference what you see this is because of the you know alloying elements and uh, uh, this is uh, you know about uh, 20th part of or 18th part of uh, the cooling rate what you see uh, what you have to maintain in the case of uh, uh, you know uh, normal eutectoid steels. So, uh, so that is how the effect of alloying elements can be seen on uh, the you know uh, formation of phases and how uh, you can uh, see with the help of these uh, CCT curves that what cooling rate what way I mean what way. So, what do you see that if you um, uh, put the um, uh, if you add the alloy that is why alloying uh, you know alloyed steels have more hardenability these alloying ele uh, elements basically they are shifting uh, towards the right and continuous cooling with that continuous cooling also. Uh, which is uh, uh, I mean in normal case uh, uh, without uh, uh, you know the use of alloying elements in the steel uh, it is very difficult to get the magnetic structure whereas in this case uh, in, in the case of continuous because in the case of continuous cooling it is difficult to get the magnetic steel you could have got in the case of TTT gram, uh, diagrams we look uh, that uh, you have to isothermally hold it and then you get that uh, structure. But in this case uh, the you are getting the magnetic structure and 
also the uh, critical cooling rate is uh, uh, reduced to half. It signifies that even at smaller cooling rate you are uh, likely to have the magnetic and martensitic structures. So, that is an advantage uh, you know of the use of alloying elements. So, uh, in a nutshell we should also know that uh, what is the you know role of these alloying elements. You have alloying elements and uh, there are different roles of these uh, alloying elements and their, their functions basically. So, if you talk about the uh, you know function of alloying elements. Now, uh, as you know that uh, they are uh, used. So, first of all they are used as uh, substitutional solutes. So, uh, you have substitutional solutes in ferrite or austenite. So, uh, many elements like uh, you know uh, you have um, the use of uh, chromium or, or nickel or so. So, they are used as uh, these elements which are used in ferrite or austenite and they will be improving the uh, properties like uh, uh, chromium and nickel if you add into the ferrite uh, you know uh, or austenite. So, they will be improving the corrosion resistance. Uh, so, so accordingly, uh, so these uh, you know uh, uh, this is the effect of uh, you know these uh, you know, alloying elements. Uh, they will be strengthening the steel basically. So, once they go into that uh, steel, so they will be strengthening the uh, steel. Then uh, they are also used as uh, so, so their function will be like they will be uh, uh, working as non metallic inclusions. So, non metallic inclusions will be in different forms like uh, you have they can they can be oxides, sulphides. and uh, uh, silicates. So, oxides means you can have uh, you know Al 2 O 3 is there. So, that becomes a non metallic inclusion you have um, you know M N S. So, that is again another uh, uh, you know uh, non metallic inclusion or M N S I O 3 so magnesium silicate. So, that is another example of the silicate. So, these alloying elements will be uh, working as the non metallic uh, uh, inclusions. Then uh, they will they can also be dissolved in cementite. So, uh, dissolved in cementite and uh, they will be uh, cementite uh, they will be dissolving as a part of the orthorhombic structure. So, as a part of orthorhombic structure. So, you have uh, uh, also like uh, you uh, FEM and whole 3 C. So, that way it is uh, you know found. Then uh, one of the very important uh, use of these alloying elements will be that they are uh, present as carbides. So, like uh, they are having fine alloy carbides and nitrides also. So, like uh, uh, you know normally uh, you have uh, uh, alloying elements which are more carbide forming or nitride forming elements. So, you have um, uh, niobium so that makes niobium carbide you have vanadium so vanadium nitride tungsten is used uh, tungsten makes tungsten carbide. So, that way uh, these alloying elements are normally the carbide or the nitride forming elements. So, and also like uh, chromium is uh, making Cr 23 C 6. So, uh, so, that way these are normally the carbide or nitride forming elements and they provide the strength. And then uh, you have also insoluble uh, metals like copper and uh, lead. So, insoluble metals. So, you have uh, like uh, uh, copper and uh, you know lead. So, uh, so this way uh, you have uh, uh, you know different types of uh, um, you know uh, alloying elements and uh, their uh, roles are different as you have we have understood. Uh, you know uh, one is one of the function when we talk about these uh, you know CCT or TTT curves. So, in that uh, uh, the very important point is that they normally try to increase the hardenability of the steel. Increasing the hardenability, hardenability of the steel means that basically there is shift of the nose curve, nose of the C curve towards the right. So, if the shift is towards the right 
in that case you can uh, have uh, you know full hardening you can have the uh, martensitic structure or you can have uh, the, um, the uh, you know uh, better structure with better properties even at a smaller cooling rate. Otherwise, you may have to go for a very large cooling rate for getting the uh, fully martensitic structure. So, uh, that is uh, the chief advantage of uh, using these uh, you know uh, uh, alloying elements. Uh, apart from that um, many a times uh, you know some of the uh, uh, sulphides or phosphides or insoluble metals they are basically for improving the machinability of uh, uh, the steel and uh, many a times you know these uh, uh, alloy carbides they so they will be uh, pinning down the migrating boundaries and uh, uh, they will be also you know th that is uh, basically during the recrystallization and grain growth. So, uh, they will be helping in uh, getting a you know, fine size. So, that is another advantage of uh, uh, these uh, alloying uh, elements and then uh, more importantly again these carbides or nitrides or uh, some something some carbides like uh, molybdenum carbide or vanadium carbide. So, they are enhancing the creep strength uh, you know uh, some of the carbides uh, they also increase the you know uh, wear resistance or abrasion resistance. So, these are uh, typically the effect of these alloying elements and they are also effect also is there uh, towards the hardenability of the steel uh, from where we can get uh, uh, the uh, full hardening of the steel you can get the martensitic structure or so. So, this is all about uh, the continuous cooling uh, you know transformation curves and uh, some uh, summary about also the use of alloying elements and their functions uh, in, in, a, in a right spirit in the um, steels. Thank you very much.